Hi, I'm Patrick and in this video we go over the most important new features in Python 3.11. It's not yet out, so it's expected to be released on Monday, October 3rd this year. But right now the beta is already available, so this means they no longer put in new features in it, but they are focused only on testing and bug fixing. You can download the beta for yourself on this link, I will put this in the description. And now let's go over the six most important new features and even a whole new module. So here I've installed it on my machine. If we print, for example, the version, then you see this is the latest beta. And the first improvement is a speed improvement. So Python 3.11 is up to 10 to 16% faster than 3.10. And this is due to two major areas, faster startup and faster runtime. So on average, you can expect this speed up in your code. The second improvement are better error messages. So Python 3.10 already got better errors, but now they are even better. So now they can point you to the exact expression that is causing an error. For example, if we run this code, then we see this exact line and an error pointing to this location. So in this case, point two is none. And that's why we get an attribute error, none typed object has no attribute X. So these are improved error messages that are super helpful, especially for beginners. We can now also add additional information to an exception. So if we catch an exception, then we can use the new function at node and then attach additional information here. And then if we re-raise this exception and run this code, then we see the additional information in the traceback. For exceptions, we also get a new standard exception type, the exception group, which represents a group of unrelated exceptions being propagated together. And belonging to this, we get a new syntax except star for handling these exception groups. So first of all, if we print is subclass exception group and exception, then we get this is true. Don't worry about these underlines here. This is because PyCharm doesn't know this yet. And now we can define an exception group that might look like this. So here we give it a name and then we define inner exceptions. So these are basically sub exceptions. And here we can define multiple unrelated exceptions. And now if we erase this and have a look at the trace back, then this is how it looks like. And it's pretty easy to follow this. So we get the exception group one with three sub exceptions. Then here we see all the sub exceptions. Then this one is an inner group with two sub exceptions and so on. And now to catch this, we can do this like this. So we say race exception group and now we can use except star and then use all these different exception groups or inner exceptions that we defined. And if we run this, then you see we now handle all these exceptions. Then the typing module got a few new features. So first of all, it got a new type literal string. This is, for example, useful to prevent SQL injections. For example, in a database API, we can define a function execute and it takes a parameter of type literal string. And now a query like this is no longer possible because then we can check this and throw an error expected literal string, but it got string. Then we also have the types not required or required for a typed dict. So with this, we can explicitly specify if a parameter is required or not required. And we can now also use the self keyword with a capital S. So if we return self, then we can define this as a type like so. And we also have a whole new module, the TOML lib module, which allows us to parse TOML files. So PyProject TOML files get more and more popular to define the build system requirements of Python projects. For example, a PyProject TOML looks like this, where we define the name, version, description, authors, and then also the dependencies and dev dependencies and so on. And in the code, we can now say tomlib.load, and then we have this as a dictionary. So if we run this, you see we parse the whole TOML file. And then we can work with this in Python. And it also offers a second method, the load s method, which does the same thing, but parses it from a string. So again, now if we run this, we see we have this as a dictionary. And this makes it super easy to work with TOML files now. Yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about the new features. I think they are pretty cool. If you want to read the whole article, then I will put this in the description below the video. And then I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.